like, yeah, bitch, you better not do this. I was like, this man has walked way too hard, way too freaking hard for her to just walk away into that sunset. Hi, beautiful people. Welcome back. If it's your first time, my name is Talia Adiwali and this is Despite Dem. Today we're talking about episode 14 on Love Island. What? <laughs> Sorry, I was watching Love Island games, the trailer and the introduction, so that's in my head. Episode 14 of Love After Divorce, which is a Korean uh, reality TV dating show. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. It is raised to 5,000, so for every round number 1,000 subscribers I get, I will be reacting to a horror movie. I hate horror movies, people, so. Anywho, back to the thing at hand. I did not do a review last week for episode 13 because honestly, I didn't think there was enough for me to put into a video to make a whole thing. So I just decided to wait and then we could talk about um, some of the things that went on in 13 as well as 14 being the series finale. Um, the season finale, sorry. They already are casting for season five. Honestly, there wasn't much that went on in 13. Uh, the friends visited uh, Jerome and... Um, Benita, friends being Tom, Sora, um, Dewey, and Jisoo. I keep forgetting her name. <laughs> Another thing that I feel like happened was we, we began to see the breakdown between Ricky and Harem. There was definitely something off by the end of that episode between them. And I clocked it and I was like, hmm, I don't necessarily want to call someone a user, but I... I'm not completely impressed with Harem throughout this season. You guys know that I was not a fan of what she did to Dewey back in episode, I don't know, seven or eight, whatever. No. Yeah, early on, maybe episode three. I don't know. But I felt like she used Dewey back then. And now that maybe she's not seen everything that she'd like to see out of um, Ricky, she's not like all in. I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, it's just my personal opinion. It has nothing to do with the girl. I'm just going off of what I'm seeing on the show. Jimmy and Heejin, I swear to God, at one point in episode 13, I forgot that Jimmy and Heejin were a couple. I don't know why. When they popped up, I was like, oh damn. Oh damn. They are still in this. They are still in this show. Uh, but it seems like they worked things out. Uh, Jimmy's parents were over and it looked like a whole good thing. The mom was very gung-ho for Jimmy to convince um, Heejin that marriage is a good option. But what I loved about Jimmy is that I think that Jimmy really understands Heejin and where she's coming from. Because he understands her fear. And even when the mom was saying, try and convince her that marriage is the best part. He said... Um, I'm paraphrasing here, but I think what he was going for was that he's going to create a safe environment for her where she feels like she's comfortable enough to accept a new husband. And I love that. Jimmy points, points. Jimmy was never like top of my list, not because he's not a good guy, but it's because I never really thought that Heejin would, you know, pick him or that it will go anywhere. If I'm being serious, Heejin is so hard to read that I never knew where she stood. And so I did not even bother investing in that whole relationship in the first place. But they turned my, they turned it around for me. The way Jimmy has loved her from the beginning and has like been all about her and created this whole thing, space for her to really understand who he is and understand their relationship together. I respect it and I love that for him. Jerome and Benita go camping and it's a whole deal trying to set up that bloody tent. I would be annoyed as well, but Jerome handled it really well. The only thing that happened within that camping trip was those bloody peaches. <laughs> Benita had wanted to take peaches, but Jerome had bought a cooler that wasn't big enough to take everything. And he told her that he didn't want her to take them because there was no space in the cooler. We all wondered what was going on and why he was so adamant that she not take the freaking peaches with her. If the girl wants peaches, give her peaches, you know? Turns out that he'd created um, a surprise for her. He'd made um, elotes. Because back in Cancun, she'd wanted elotes on the street, but by the time they got back, they'd closed. So he'd done this whole surprise for her, and he had corn, and there was no space because of the surprise. Now, do I think that he could have handled the whole situation differently? Yes. I would have said, um, sure, let's just uh, bring the peaches. There might not be space in the cooler, but we can keep it in a car and try and keep it cool. You know, it's peaches. You can eat it at room temperature. It doesn't have to be cold, right? Or... 
uh, <clears throat> take something else out of the cooler. Just like there were ways to handle it. And she was very upset that he didn't want her to take the peaches. Uh, but he was so strung out and uptight about not ruining the surprise that he didn't even clue in that she was she was upset. Moving on, we go on to episode 14. They start with Jimmy and Heejin and they go to the cable car in Korea. Apparently, this is the cable car that they use for every other season. So we actually get to see it for us uh, foreigners who don't really watch the show or haven't really seen it until this season. And I was really glad about that. It's really beautiful. Honestly, it was a very scenic um, date that they had. He tells, she tells him, he just tells Jimmy that she likes him, which is the first time that I've heard her say that to him on the show. He tells her that he has dated a lot of women since he's divorced. I think he's been on 13 dates, if I remember correctly. Uh, but he said nothing ever worked and he was beginning to think that maybe he was the problem. But meeting her has changed that where he thinks that they might be able to create something that would last. And I was just like, oh, I'm melting. Jimmy, that was so nice. That was so nice. And then they switch over to Jerome and Benita. And they're still camping. And now they go for the hike that she's always wanted. And while they're on their hike, they're discussing their chemistry and then how things are between them. Um, he took, he actually brought those damn peaches with him. And she tells him that she was actually really upset about that. And he doesn't say anything because he doesn't want to give away the surprise. But I think he does acknowledge that she was upset about that. Uh, back at camp, Jerome reveals that he made the surprise for her. And she was actually really happy. Apparently, she tells us that that was the turning point for her end decision. And I was like, damn, okay, Alotes, you do your thing. She was actually very happy that he made, um, that he took the time to make everything for her. Because he made everything from scratch for her. They have a deep conversation and she ends up thanking Jerome for taking care of her. She said that he's very sensitive to her needs and he's been all about her from the very beginning. And the fact that she knew that and acknowledged that, honestly, it, it deepened my respect for Benita. You guys know I like Benita. I just hate the concept of her hating Jerome. That is my whole thing. I love the woman. I like, I like how her mind works. She thinks she's an introvert, but I think she's secretly an extrovert. And Jerome is going to bring that personality out of her. So for her to actually acknowledge and say it, she's not a very like um, touchy-feely person. So for her to have said that, that was a big leap for me. And I was like, okay, you got, you got points in my book, girl. You got points in my book. They switch over back to Jimmy and Heejin. And it's time for, Jimmy says, asks her if she wants to talk to his parents. Heejin is immediately on guard. Like, she is immediately anxious. And then I remember that her problem, they also flash back and tell us that her problem with her ex-husband was that, uh, was with the mother-in-law and the mother-in-law didn't like her so eventually that whole communication broke down and she never could communicate with her mother-in-law so she was extremely anxious about this whole conversation like honestly you could tell that she was uncomfortable where she was sitting and then the mom greets her and it's it, it went it goes really good the dad is sick but they still take the phone to him and he apparently he had the biggest smile on for Heejin and they were so welcoming and so loving after the conversation she was so relieved she's so, like, it was so touching to her that people could love her without even knowing her that she breaks down and she starts crying. And I, I was like, yeah, I feel you. I feel your pain. I get what that is like, you know. And even one of the, um, what's it called? One of the MCs, Jihei, Jihei said that she went through the exact same thing where her ex, one of her ex-boyfriend's parents did not like her at all. So when she met her current husband's uh, parents and when they welcomed her, like she didn't, she didn't even know that love could be given that freely, you know, which is how it's supposed to be. So Heejin was extremely happy about that. And I think that was the turning point for her in the entire thing. Like having his parents accept her, even without meeting her, having his parents be so loving, so welcoming, it really did move her, I think, and, and I think that solidified her decision for the end. Then we move to Ricky and Harim, who, who have a date at the jazz bar. It's the first time in a long time that it's just been two of them on a date. And their vibe, you can just tell that their vibe is off, you know? Um, she asks Ricky, is there anything that you're worried about? He then answers, <laughs> guys, guys, it's a trap. <laughs> It's a trap. If a woman asks you, is there anything that you're worried about? That is not the time to bring it up. Just be like, exactly what one of the MC says. Oh, I'm, I'm worried that I'll fall more deeply in love with you. It's a trap. I'm telling you from one woman to you. 
my mouth to your ears. It's a freaking trap. Because she asked him. And he said, I'm worried about the differences in our lifestyle where I am extremely neat and you are a little messy. And she got offended. She, in typical woman fashion, she got offended. And honestly, I don't understand. Womankind, my peoples, why do you do this? Why do you ask somebody a question and then when they answer you, you get angry? Huh? And I do it sometimes too, so I'm not, I'm not like above it all. But at some point, if you don't want to hear the answer, don't ask the question. <laughs> and she says that, oh, it's something, it's a, it's a bit of an insecurity for her because she used to be neat. I'll say him bringing it up every time. It's really um, grating on her nerves and she doesn't like it. And he says, I don't bring it up for us to fight. I bring it up because it's something that I know that I will be worried about. The man should be able to express himself. Now, do I like that she told him it's a bit of an insecurity for her? Yes. But I feel like everything could have been handled differently. And then um, she then says that in the past month since Cancun, uh, they've stopped talking about things romantically and they only talk about practical stuff. You see, what Harem is looking for is not what this show is about. If I'm being honest, Harem wants um, head in the clouds, romantic fantasy. Is it too much to ask? No. However, if you're planning to have um, a real life marriage with this person, you are going to have to discuss the practical stuff. Maybe not all the time, but you definitely need to talk about things. And he is a realistic person. He's like, okay, if for us, if, if we want to merge our lives, we have to be realistic about this kind of things. And then Ricky in English, because remember when I told you guys that um, Ricky's Korean is not that good. And I think that that has hindered him in this entire show because in English, he was fully expressive. He was talking and laying down his emotions and they should have let him speak English from the beginning. I get it. I get it. But why in America? Let him speak English because that's what he's used to. So Ricky in English tells her that he's tells her his reasons. And he says that because he's serious about marrying her. And that's why he brings up all these realistic things. Because if you don't talk about it now, when are you going to talk about it? You know, is it when you guys are married that you now start figuring out all this stuff? It makes no sense. Um, He says that he really loves her. And that he will legit be heartbroken if it doesn't work out between them. She doesn't say anything. And I'm like, for me, and this is where we all differ. But for me. If that wasn't a declaration, I don't know what else you're looking for. If you're looking for security, he just gave it to you in, in, in a nutshell there. If you're looking for um, love, he just gave it to you. So, I really didn't know what Harim was looking for. Harim is looking for hearts and flowers 24-7. That's not life. You come with three children, girl. Be realistic. Like, I'm not saying that you don't deserve that. I'm just saying that it's not 24-7. Those kind of things, they they kind of just seep into your lives as a married couple. That's what I think. Like, it's realistic 24-7 and then the romantic stuff just seeps in and it becomes natural. So I'm not really sure what... I, from my tone, you guys know that I, if I'm taking sides, I'm taking Ricky's side. Not because I don't think Harim deserves all this thing, but because I think she's being unrealistic and very not practical about the situation that she's in. Just, just saying. Anywho, final decision rolls around and um, the, the whole uh, format is that the couples will walk up to each other, then turn their backs on each other. And then if you want to stay in the relationship, you turn around. But if you don't, you just walk away. And I was like, why such cruelty? <laughs> it is so cruel. Could you imagine turning around and then the person that you're with walks away? Could you imagine that? Oh my God, that, that's just terrible. Anywho, the MCs do a reimagination for foreign um for the foreign audience who is watching the entire show for the first time, and I thought it was so cute. It was between Austin and Jihei, and it was everything. <laughs> it was everything. It was hilarious. It was romantic. I didn't know that the MCs were actors because they were fantastic in their portrayal. Loved it. They start off with Jimmy and Benita, and Benita is saying things, and I'm I'm already screaming. I think my brother was like, "What's going on?" I was already screaming. I was like, "You bitch, you better not do this." I was like, "You better not. I will come find you in that factory, and it's gonna go down." Because the way she was talking, she's like, "Oh, can I depend on him?" And I was like, "Benita, we've been too much. It, it, it has been too much this past how many months? Is it not two months or three months that we've been watching this show now?" It's been too much for us to come down this line and you walk away. I'm not going to stand for it. 
Anyhow, they walk up to each other, they turn around. Obviously, Jerome turns back and he turns around to face her. He's the first to turn. And I was thinking that Benita was going to walk away into the sunset, people. And then she turned. She turned. And I almost wept. I was so happy. I wasn't even happy for Benita. I was happy for Jerome. Because it's like, this man has walked way too hard. Way too freaking hard for her to just walk away into that sunset. I will, oh God, let's not even, it ended well, people. She, they turned around and he kissed her. He kissed her before she could even say no. And I love that. I love them. I hope that they last forever and ever. Have beautiful kids and amazing grandkids. Love it. He did say that she's at an age where she might not like be interested in having it, but he's open to adoption. And I mean, Jerome, honestly, for whatever flaws he may have, he is a good person. And I like him. Then we move on to Jimmy and Heejin. And um, still can't read Heejin, people. Still don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I don't. I can't read this woman. She is a very tough person to read. So for her, I didn't know what would happen. You know? And um, they're talking about it. And they walk up to each other. Um, they express their love to each other. They turn around. Jimmy is the first to turn back around to face her. And I didn't know what will happen. If she walked away, I would have expected it. If she didn't, it would have been a surprise. But she ended up turning around as well. And she said, she did say that the phone conversation with his parents was a huge turning point for her. For people to accept her so freely. Like, she didn't, she never expected that. It was like Sora when Sora figured out that she was worthy of love, you know? It's that realization that they all get throughout the entire series. And I love that for them because... God, it had to take an ego beating, you know, when you get a divorce. For whatever reason, there's some part of your ego that goes away with it. Some part of your self-esteem that you lose in it, right? So it's official. Jimmy and Heejin are dating. And they show us pictures where they visit his parents before they leave Korea. And they also visit her, um, her parents again before they leave. I thought that it was so beautiful. I honestly love them. They were my two favorite couples. Ricky and Harim then come about. And she's... Honestly, she's sprouting some words that I think that she should not have turned. She does turn around. They are in a relationship. There was no build up to this. I don't think that she wants to be with him. I think she wants an excited life. I think she wants somebody who's going to take her, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, adrenaline rush, I guess. She wants those uh, dopamine feeds every single time of the relationship. I think that's what she's looking for. She's looking for some excitement in her life romantically. And she deserves that. But I don't think that Ricky is that person. Ricky is looking for a steady home. He wants to build a family with somebody. And even though he's in love with her and he turned around first, I honestly thought that she was going to walk away. She does turn anyways. And they're in a relationship. And he's, um, they decide that she will be moving to Los Angeles with the kids because she has 100% custody of the kids. He has 50-50. So if he had moved to Seattle, he would never get to see his son. So she decided that she would move and he would show her a little bit of her city she did say that she wanted a more sunny climate so i mean you think that it will work well for them i fast forward to today i did obviously run straight to their instagrams and to the internet to see who is still together jimmy and hejin are still together still going strong we love that for them Jerome and Benita are still together. I love that he did this whole um, snippet of uh, what's it called? He did a whole write up on Instagram. He changed his uh, DP to Benita. You know, he is doing all the right things, saying that she's my woman. You can do anything. You can't come for her. Like, we're still together. I'm just going to see if I can find it so that I can read what he wrote. Oh, yeah, he said, uh, Damn, it's already over. It's been a wild journey from the first day of filming. Uh, March 26th to the last day of airing on uh, November 22nd. In a way, I'm relieved. In a way, I'm sad relieved because I had to keep my mouth shut for about seven months. Sad because Love After Divorce 4 is over. This was one of the best moments of my life. I met some good friends, learned um, learned a lot and experienced something new. There's, He says some other stuff. And then uh, he says also thank you to the five MCs for sharing for us and showing us mad love. Definitely, you guys are amazing. And now for the answer a lot of people want to hear. I am still with Benita. The answer is yes. We are still together and still going strong. Exclamation mark. Team Janita are the one of your baby. <laughs> it's still in effect. I didn't know we would get all this love from you. Thank you for all. Thank you for all the 
thank you all for showing my love to us and to the show. Some of y'all are wondering if I'm going to get back in the entertainment business after being on the show. I came on the show for one reason and I have accomplished that, to find love. So no, I'm not going back to that life. I'm good where I'm at. I do appreciate you, appreciate you guys having an interest in us since the show is over. We're posting pics from Janita's love journey. Janita and I's love journey so far. Thank you all and stay happy and healthy. So happy. Like this, 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 oh, it made my heart hum. I was so happy. I was like, yes. If nobody else makes it, Janita has to make it. Barom has to make it. Dear baby has to make it. You know, I was very happy about that. The only people that I didn't see any updates on were Ricky and Haram, which makes me believe that they might not be together. If you guys know, let me know in the comment section. But I don't think that they're still together. I feel like that relationship, um, imploded maybe or something i don't know let me know in the comment section if you know if you can confirm whether they're together or not um i have been following sora i actually sent her a message and she replied thanks i know like it might be like her assistant who replied but guys i was so excited i was like sora <laughs> so dramatic it was so unnecessary but i was so excited i don't care if it was a bot that replied or if it was her assistant I was happy. I was like, Sora replied me, baby. Sora knew me for at least 10 seconds. I made it. I made it, y'all. Honestly, I have loved, loved this show. I can't wait for the next one. I know that Singles Inferno, another season is coming, but I think maybe that's next year. So I just have to, you know, be patient. I am jonesing hard for something else Korean, either a game show or a love show that's really good. So I'll be on the lookout for that. But I have loved this so much. Thank you, everybody, who has supported all the videos, who has um, commented, who's just been coming along for this journey. I loved it. I love the couples in the end. The ones that made it especially are my people. So thank you, everybody. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I post new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!